Well, good. good morning, everybody. Uh, I'm Bob Lister, and I'm re a representative of the DSRF here in the UK. This second session is going to be concerned with indicators and markers. This follows up from the ones we've already had uh, about uh, pet markers. And our first speaker is Alex Sumick from the University of Nottingham. It's now Trent, isn't it? University. Who's going to talk uh, about uh, EEG. You've already heard some references from Andy to EEG. Uh, Alex is going to expand on that. Alex Sumick. Is that on? Oh, great. Um, so I, I'm actually, I feel a bit like a new kid on the block, actually. Um, my background, I did a, my PhD down at, at Andy's department at King's, um, and, and since then I've done some, and that was in schizophrenia, in fact, and since then I've done some work on other neurodevelopmental disorders. So my interest is in neurodevelopment, ne developmental disorders, and, and moving also into brain maturation across the whole lifespan. I got interested in Down syndrome when Peter uh, approached me um, with regards to an EEG assessment for, for David. And um, that began actually uh, quite an incredible journey through the literature of EEG on, on Down syndrome. And um, synergistically, that, that sort of merged with another interest of mine, which is nutritional therapies, and particularly fatty acids. I'm interested in fatty acids because there, there's been some evidence for them in increasing glutamate function and reducing obesity and improving sensory uh, deficits and improving depression and, and Im improve with uh, also uh, immunological um, function as well. And so all of these things um, uh, seem to be present in Down syndrome. So one of my pushes is actually um, to start to look at fatty acids and, and Down syndrome. I'm going to mention a little bit of that work in conjunction with my EEG studies. Um, so what is EEG? EEG is, is basically the electrical function of the brain. And looking more closely, it relies on uh, glutamatergic um, neurons um, uh, from the thalamus and intracortical or intracortically. Um, it reflects the extracellular response, so the, the, the electrical response outside um, the cells in uh, the apical dendrites of, of pyramidal cells. And as I mentioned, those are mostly coming from the thalamus. Now, the thalamus um, is, used to be known as a, as a sort of relay for sensory information. Um, and, but it's, a, it's much more than that. Um, and it contains an inner core um, and an outer rind, much like the outside of this cup here. And the outer rind is inhibitory, and the inner core is predominantly sort of excitatory. So it presents quite an interesting dynamic between inhibitory and excitatory functions within the brain. As um, those inhibitory functions become stronger, for example, as we drift to sleep, the electrical function in the brain becomes much uh, more synchronized and slower. So we move from, say, a beta activity here through to synchronized alpha and highly synchronized theta and, and delta activity. Um, and, and this actually characterizes sleep. This is how we drift to sleep. Uh, but uh, the, the synchrony in EEG may also um, uh, reflect mechanisms that are um, affected in Down syndrome as well. Uh, I mentioned one of those, the areas involved in this, which is the thalamus. Um, and the thalamus is more than a relay station for sensory information. It also relays information about memory and is involved in, in executive functions as well. It has strong links with the hippocampus, which we've, we've, we've spoken about, and with the frontal cortex, which is also affected in, in Down syndrome. So some of my work has been looking at how EEG changes as a child grows older, and um, what you find is the development of, uh, or, or an, a, 
a decrease in um, the slower frequencies and an increase in the faster frequencies with age. And underlying this seems to be um, development of thalamic glutamate and also um, the development of myelin um, projecting from the thalamus to the cortex and also intracortically. Uh, my work shows that, that um, a, a frequency known as alpha activity, which I'll show is affected in Down syndrome, um, is proportional to um, blood concentrations of a fatty acid known as tocosahexaenoic acid. So the higher DHA, the higher the alpha activity. As we age, alpha activity decreases um, and theta activity increases. So you get a, a, a slowing and a reduction of um, the faster frequencies and an increase in um, the slower frequencies. So we return to, to a state that we'd, we'd see in, in childhood as well. Um, this uh, decrease in alpha and increase in theta um, uh, ha has been shown to distinguish healthy aging, mild cognitive impairment, and AD um, with a sensitivity of between 85 and 95 percent. It's thought to be underpinned by the myelination, um, thalamic glutamate, but also is affected by neuromodulators uh, implicated in Down syndrome, such as acetylcholine, noradrenaline, and serotonin. Um, there is some indication that, that, that these measures might be um, potential markers of an early risk for, for Alzheimer's and, and, or of de, uh, neurodegeneration in Down syndrome. What do we see in Down syndrome? Well, actually, what we see in Down syndrome reflects very much what we see in alpha, Alzheimer's. So we see an increase in the slower frequencies, theta and, and, and delta, and we see a decrease in the faster frequencies, beta and alpha. The, these changes, particularly the changes to the alpha um, rhythm, are exacerbated by, by older age and Down syndrome, cognitive decline, and the onset of dementia. So they seem to track the neurodegeneration and, and, and uh, Down syndrome. They correlate with an enlargement of the cerebrospinal fluid inside uh, the space, inside the third ventricle. And you can see here that the third ventricle actually, either side of the third ventricle, we have the thalamus. Um, over, and it, what this doesn't show, actually, over above the third ventricle, we also have the area connecting the thalamus with the hippocampus, which is the fornix. So it may be that this response uh, reflects thalamic degeneration or fornix or the connection between these two regions, which is vital for the development of short-term memory. Okay, so one, one of the advantages of EEG is that we can measure um, the function of the brain at rest. We don't have to ask the individual to do anything, but we can. And if we do ask them to respond to a stimulus or to look at the presentation of a stimulus, you, you see a pattern of EEG that reflects the brain's response to that stimulus. Not only that, but, but the um, passage of the information um, of that stimulus through the auditory nerve, up through the thalamus, projecting out towards the sensory cortices and association cortices. So these very early waveforms here, um, marked um, one, two, three, four, and five, uh, within 10 milliseconds reflect the passage of that information through the auditory um, nerve up towards the thalamus. Um, and abnormalities in Down syndrome start there. Um, I'm not going to go into depth about those, uh, except to say that, 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 that those abnormalities may underlie the sensory impairments that we see in Down syndrome. Um, these late, later components, um, P1, N1, P2, reflect 
the relay of information from the thalamus out towards the cortex, sensory cortex, um, anterior cingulate, and parietal, very parietal cortex. And then the later, later components are usually only present when you ask an individual to respond to a stimulus, and they reflect uh, more sort of memory um, uh, processes involved in working memory and encoding semantic memory. So what do we see in Down syndrome with these, these, these measures? One um, is a reduction and a slowing. So um, it occurs at a later time point of a uh, component known as the N1. And this measure reflects um, and sort of the thalamic re relay to the, the, the cortex. Um, it's thought to be involved in feature encoding, so um, encoding memory and integration. And you see an, uh, a slowing of this component um, which is reliable across ages. So you see it in young people with Down syndrome and in older people with Down syndrome. You also see a reduction in the power of this, this measure. Uh, but that seems to be only present in studies that have looked at older people with Down syndrome, so 42 to 63. Uh, a, a study that looked at 18 to 31-year-olds didn't re replicate this. So, but we don't know whether this correlates with age or whether it's an important marker of age or not. What we do know is that it's also replicated in mouse models. And this is another strength of these techniques. Because you don't have to ask your participant to do anything complicated, you can also um, measure these, these, these components in animal models of Down syndrome. And that's important for translating from preclinical through to human studies. It's possible then that this, this measure reflects some kind of endophenotype for, Downs, for precocious aging in Down syndrome. That's a hypothesis. Um, Okay, an, an, another ERP that we find abnormal in Down syndrome um, follows the N1 and is thought to be an inhibitory filter. Um, now, this measure um, is seen in both young and old cohorts um, and is thought to reflect an, an impairment in habituation to the stimulus, um, which may reflect a sort of disruption to inhibitory mechanisms. Interestingly, it's improved by vitamin B6 supplementation, um, and that may be via its effect on serotonin. Okay. I have another hypothesis, and that draws on um, data from healthy individuals, um, but healthy individuals in which um, glutamate is blocked or GABA is agonized. Okay. So this is, this is a study by Watson, which... Um, use ketamine and theopentanol, and in healthy adults, um, under both of these drugs, um, you get the same response, so this enhancement of the P2, okay? Um, so it may be that this reflects an imbalance between these excitatory inhibitory um, receptors that we know to be abnormal in Down syndrome. Now, um, Interestingly, some of our preliminary evidence from our fatty acid studies shows that supplementation, at least in kids with ADHD, um, reduces this component. So it normalizes this, this, this measure. OK, so um, and, and this, this abnormality in P2 might also underlie uh, a, a, another abnormality known as, um, which is the absence of a measure known as the mismatch negativity. Uh, now, the mismatch negativity is um, thought to reflect the detection of feature change um, in, in your environment and an alerting to novelty. It's, again, a passive task. The individual doesn't have to push a button or, or respond to anything. They sit, they listen to sounds, they watch a cartoon. Um, but the response that we get from the EEG with this relies on sensory memory, and sensory memory trace. So basically we would 
present a series of stimuli and then a, a physically different stimuli. The sensory memory trace is carried with the, with the standard and then altered with, with, the, with the deviant. This relies on, um, on regions that are implicated in Down syndrome and dementia, the, the superior temporal gyrus, the hippocampus, the thalamus, the anterior cingulate, and the inferior frontal gyrus. So it's no wonder that it's absent in people with Down syndrome. Um, interestingly, this measure also reflect, uh, responds to inhibitory and excitatory ma manipulation. So our studies show that it correlates with the MRS signal, this is what Andy was talking about, the magnetic resonance spectroscopy signal, for glutamate. So the high, higher your thalamic glutamate, the stronger the signal. It also is um, decreased by GABA-A agonism, increased by NMDA antagonism, and, sorry, uh, decreased by NMDA antagonism or increased by, by um, agonism, and increased by, um, facilitated by, by cholinergic input. So it, it may reflect a good marker for that uh, inhibitory, excitatory uh, imbalance. The relationship with age and Down syndrome is not known. It's unclear. Uh, okay, so these, these tasks I've just mentioned don't require any response and, and so are very easy to conduct in, in people with Down syndrome. There are other more uh, simple response tasks where you, you may ask the individual to respond to a target and that target uh, may require um, the engagement of working memory processes and remembering that that's the thing you need to respond to um, and uh, is thought to elicit mechanisms involved in working men memory including um, frontal regions um, but also in encoding um, semantic memory such, and, and so the hippocampus is, is very much involved in, in this kind of response as well. And it, and it evokes uh, two additional components known as the N2 and the P3, um, which reflect widespread networks across the brain. Um, uh, and we find that this is, uh, this, the P3 at least is proportional to th thalamic um, uh, N NAA, but not glutamate. Um, and the, these measures also respond to GABA and glutamate uh, manipulation. In Down syndrome, the N2B seems to be um, uh, uh, very low or absent. Um, P3A is higher and perhaps again reflect the impairment and habituation, but P3B is, is, is lower. And that reflects possibly um, an impairment in the hippocampal frontal networks. Okay. Um, now, the time point at which these components occur, um, known as the latency, seems to be um, a fantastic, uh, a very good measure of um, aging in Down syndrome. This has been known since 1985. Um, this is a study by St. Clair and Blackwood, uh, and it shows the trajectory of the change in this measure with age. And um, um, following, the, so you have Down syndrome up the top here and healthy controls down here. And you can see the rate at which you get the decline in this measure is much earlier in Down syndrome. People with Down syndrome actually start off a step behind as well, so, so it's slower from, from, from the outset. Um, and it suggests that, that neurodegeneration Down syndrome starts 20, earliest, 20 years earlier than, than um, non-Downs. In MCI, this is associated with left frontal and temporal NAA. Um, and we know that temporal NAA is reduced in Down syndrome. But we don't know the relationship between these measures yet. Um, so the biochemical correlates of this potentially good measure for un, um, pathological aging DS have not been investigated. 
Okay, um, this is slide is just basically to say that there's also other measures that have been well studied in Alzheimer's um, that uh, uh, there and but have not been investigated in Down syndrome, and and that rely on this this network of frontal thalamic hippocampal um, function. So the strengths of this technique, uh, one, it's a direct measure of electrocortical function with very high temporal resolution. So we can understand the timing of the, these, the, these changes in, in cognition. We can also identify changes in um, the connectivity between regions. Um, it's non-invasive and comfortable for, for the participant and relatively inexpensive, a good, good point. So easy to develop large databases. And some of my work has been um, in uh, international databases with EEG involving thousands of individuals. Um, there's very good standardization across these and, and, and test interlab reliability. Um, you can present both passive and, and active tasks. They're a good bridge. Um, this may be a bit egocentric, but the excellent bridge between preclinical and clinical studies. You can use similar measures in animals and, hu and in humans. Um, they have potential for diagnostic and pro prognostic outcome, um, and also show um, uh, potential for, for as endophenotypes, so links with genes. Um, I think they make an excellent intermediary between biochemistry and behaviour. Um, and this is what this slide is showing. Can you wrap up, sure. So my questions are, um, what are the mechanisms underlying EEG and ERP abnormalities in Down syndrome? We need to know more about that, how they're related to the biochemistry, how they're related to the inhibitory, excitatory abnormalities that we see, how they're related to thalamic hippocampal networks. Um, inflammation. Um, and I think we need more longitudinal studies. We've said this in a few previous studies, and I think uh, uh, speakers have said this. We need longitudinal studies. Um, EEG presents uh, a, a great tool for, for looking at that because of, uh, of excellent test retest reliability and comfort for patients, for, for people. My other interest is whether nutritional interventions can protect against the mechanisms underlying these alterations in the EEG, um, and, and particularly with regards to ageing and Down syndrome. <laughs>